Leading the charge, how student-staff collaboration led to a transformative digital skills program at a university, which I'm assuming is Winchester. There we are, I guessed right. Okay, over to you. Excellent. Right, okay, oh look, I can see my thing. Okay, yes, right, well, before we begin, this wasn't the original intention of this slide, right? Yeah. Start off. Yeah, stick with the mic. Sorry. I will. Yeah, it might be a good idea. I, I do tend to wander, so let's have a stick, Mike. Thank you. But I, I'll try and stay behind the podium. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I was originally expecting to give this presentation um, alongside a colleague, uh, Jenny, who is our senior tell champ, now senior digital ambassador. She would have, in fact, done all the heavy lifting through this presentation, but unfortunately she's had to, to leave. She's actually been at this conference for the last three days, but some very tragic circumstances mean that she's had to leave under a lot of, um, under a lot of, in a great hurry. And that means that what you're left with at the end of a very gruelling conference, I'm sure, is the spectacle of a hot and flustered middle-aged man trying to ad lib to a sequence of slides. So um, it's fine. What could be a better conclusion to, um, to the day? Um, so what really I'm aiming to describe here today is a much more contained type of change to the change that we've just heard about. Um, and, I'm, and I'm saying that because no change is, is, is easy, um, but, but this is certainly more straightforward in the sense that the, the thing that we were trying to change was clearly defined um, and, uh, and I suspect that the process was less complex. But really what I think the value of this example is, is it shows how, um, how a student or the impact that a student can have when they are supported and empowered to lead that, to lead that change. Um, and one of the things that we were going to see today, were Jenny here, is Jenny would be able to show you and impress upon you the amazing things that she's done. And it's always tempting to say, well, what we're seeing here is the impact of this individual person's intervention. And I don't want to diminish Jenny's contribution in, in any way at all. She is genuinely really amazing. She's done an amazing, outstanding job, done and achieved much more than I was hoping she would when we started this, this process. But the thing is, is what has Jenny got? She is energetic, she's creative, she's intelligent, she's highly motivated. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone in the room who doesn't know any students from your own universities that fit all of those criteria. I mean, universities are full of students like that, aren't they? So I think that rather than this really being a, an insight into what one person has achieved, while that is in itself remarkable, I think what this, this example shows is, is, as I said before, how, how students can lead change and how they can have an, in, an, an extraordinary Im, impact as they do so. Okay, so right, let's sort of see if we can get back on, on track. Um, now, Jenny did have some um, interactive Mentimeter activities, but of course she's not here. I don't know her login details. Um, that is Jenny. That is me. Um, about eight years ago, uh, so I apologise for that, but Jenny's done me a solid, and um, so if you come to this and you're disappointed, I'm, I apologise. There you go. Now, I won't say too much about the role of this project in the strategic plan. Jenny would have done this much more succinctly. I want to spend a bit more time in this presentation giving you some of my personal reflections on later slides, so I'm going to gloss over this a little bit. All I'll say that what you're looking at here is the Winters, University of Winchester's new strategic plan, and I think what Jenny had done is she'd highlighted a couple of features on there that, 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 that she'd been mindful of as she developed the scheme, and indeed which she and I had discussed at the outset and provided, I suppose, a bit of a framework for her thinking. So as you can see, and I have to peer myself, um, you know, we've got, we've got this idea of partnership, we've got this idea of, um, of uh, focus on digital skills and so on. Okay, so maybe bear that in mind. Now, as I said before, the, the, the change that we were looking to affect this year was fairly specific, focused, well-defined, contained, um, and it's basically taking what used to be, what we used to call our Telchamp scheme, um, and transforming it into something that would be more impactful, more beneficial for students, and would achieve, would, would, would achieve more for the same resource. Because as all of us in this room are probably in the business of doing at the moment, we're being asked to do more with the same, 
and possibly even with, with, with less. So I'll just spend a little bit of time just saying what the old scheme looked like. Um, and I'm going to invite you, as you do so, to think about, um, about what similar schemes at your own universities might, might look like and to what extent the changes that we've attempted to implement mirror your own thinking or, or projects that have occurred in your own institutions. So, so our original Telchamp scheme was, um, was characterised by applications for limited spaces. I'll come back to each of these things in a minute. So, so we only had a limited number of opportunities for TEL champions, and we had an application process that they would use. There was a defined set of criteria and objectives, so the scheme was described in quite a lot of detail, and it was very clear to the students about what they would be expected to do over the year uh, when they joined the scheme. And there was very much an emphasis on project work. So the idea was that a student would spend a year undertaking a project of their choosing, but guided by these criteria, um, and that they would do so in collaboration with an academic partner, with a tutor, for the most part. It didn't have to be a tutor, but, but in almost every case it was. Now, having application, an application process did mean that we could allocate limited resources equitably, although it is worth saying that... Um, the, the scheme did tend to attract the more confident students uh, and, and the way we promoted the scheme was also tied to the standard academic calendar so there possibly were groups of students within the university who felt excluded but the most, the most problematic thing about the application process was that we were, we were really limited in the number of students who could participate in the scheme so but, you know, that was a resource issue if you like but it was the application process that enforced that the criteria that we established around the scheme allowed us to provide a good level of oversight um, of what the tell champs did and to support them in their role. But it, but it imposed, well, I've said a number of things here, but what it, what it did in essence, I think, is that it imposed a focus on the, the role of technology in learning. And it didn't give students scope to think more widely about the value of, of learning technology um, to, to them. So the criteria served to, to define the scope of the scheme and it, it made it quite narrow in terms of focus. The emphasis on the project work met institutional aims and it gave students opportunities to do things like publish in our student journal, um, to make applications to our student fellowship scheme. So it, um, it was quite aligned in that sense to other things that were happening in the university. Um, but it, it, did, it, did make, it did really raise the bar in terms of participation. Students really struggled, and one of the things that they really struggled with was, okay, managing the workload of this project alongside their studies. Not all of them had a good understanding of how challenging that might be through the year, but, but I think the thing that really challenged students an awful lot was creating and sustaining that relationship with their academic tutor. That, that was quite difficult as well. Okay, so everything goes there. So what did the new scheme achieve to do? Well, we first and foremost, and really the starting point for all of our discussion was that we wanted to make the team, the, the, the process more inclusive. In fact, we wanted to change the scheme so that any number, all students potentially could participate. So it had to be scalable. We wanted a new focus on, on digital skills. Um, and we wanted, to, we wanted to encourage students to... to apply those skills in a creative and innovative way and in a way that, in a, in a way that was aligned to their own personal um, aspirations. So we wanted the scheme to be much more student-centred in that, in that sense. We wanted the focus to be far more, more on, on developing the, the part, the, those student participants and allowing them to apply the skills that they acquired in ways that were meaningful, in ways that were meaningful to them. Now, in doing this... I was really keen at the outset that this part of the project should be student-led, and there was a number of different, different reasons for that. Um, but one of the ways that we did it was to get some financial support within the university to appoint a senior TEL champion, and were Jenny here, she would be standing in that capacity as the senior TEL champion. Um, she and I discussed some guiding principles, if you like. I'd, I'd set out a framework which we'll look at very briefly in a moment, um, but that from that point, my intention was to step back 
and then I would lead, take a, a supporting role, where Jenny would drive, in collaboration with the participating students, would define what the content of the scheme would be, what issues, what topics, what, what skills it would, it would address, and that the, the students with Jenny at, their, at the helm would decide the most appropriate way to deliver um, and support that, that scheme as it went through. Now, what were these guiding principles? I think it's quite important just to get an understanding of that at the outset. We had three, in a sense. What I wanted, Jenny, the challenge that I set her was to develop a scheme around three interrelated principles of digital presence, digital participation, and digital entrepreneurship. Now, the meaning of these things isn't necessarily self-evident. But what I mean by this is that from a digital... Let's start with digital participation in a way. For me, what the digital participation meant was about students not just reflecting on digital skills, but was about applying digital skills and doing meaningful things with those digital skills, things that were meaningful in terms of the student's own identity, uh, curriculum choices, the course that they'd chosen to do. So it was envisaged that a tell champ who was from a nursing degree would produce something, a portfolio as it happens, very different from a history student who was also a tell champion. Uh, so that they would, they would be applying and creating things with these, with, with these digital skills. The digital presence refers to their ability to see themselves within the context of the digital skills that they were acquiring. So it's that move, as I said it there, from literacy to fluency. Now, this is a bit problematical, this kind of allegory, but the way I see it is that at a very basic level, literacy is about decoding. It's about recognising symbols of shared meaning. You know, if we apply that to digital skills, it isn't hard to, to find the correlation. Whereas to be fluent is to be able to, is to, be able to take those principles, to take the, the language, if you like, or the skills that are, that, that are at stake, and to do new and creative things. And from that, we come to digital entrepreneurship, which is the focus on students doing creative and innovative things, which would ultimately be captured in a portfolio. So it was around these rather loose, high-level ideas that, that Jenny worked. Um, as I say, she worked in the capacity of the tell champ, and what she worked very quickly with the first cohort of Tell Champions was to develop a programme of events um, and a framework for mentoring and the support of those Tell Champs. And at that point, I sort of stepped back. Um, and at the end of this session, what I'd like to do is just come back and think a little bit about what shared leadership actually involved. So, what I'd like to do now is literally just give you some insights into the kind of things that Jenny did um, and to provide some, um, some observations just of myself. Now, the thing that Jenny was very keen to do was to identify some sort of framework, some sort of theoretical basis for what she was doing. She didn't need any guidance from, from, from me in this respect, but this is, what she, this is what she came up with about balancing privacy and um, openness, developing digital literacies, valuing social learning, and challenging traditional role expectations, um, all, all adapted from, from well, the illustration and the ideas adapted from Cone 2017. Now, in order to promote the scheme, she took existing links with the IDEA programme. She worked to develop guidance on our Canvas VLE, and she, what this wheel is, which I don't know how well you can see that, but the wheel, that wheel represents all the technologies, all the learning technologies that are supported within the university to some extent or another. Um, towards the outer rim, I think, if I remember correctly, are all the technologies that we subscribe to and for which there are institutional accounts and all that sort of thing. Um, and as we go progressively towards the middle, we're finding tools that are, oh, sorry, um, less well supported. Um, but Jenny was very keen to provide opportunities for students to choose from and explore the application for, for all of these tools and, indeed, much more, as you shall see. I'll just go through here because I'm not quite sure what Jenny would have said to this. This slide provides you with a bit of an insight into how those canvas, that Canvas content was organised. So there was a substantial body of material on there which all students who signed up to the scheme could, could, could use um, and draw upon. Uh, there was a range of open education and free resources that she marshalled, and one of the ways in which the, the Canvas course worked was to act as a kind of conduit or a hub, giving students kind of 
curating students' access, if you like, to these various free and open education resources. And then there were the taught sessions themselves, which, which Jenny ran, um, but which she also tried to find external people to come in. And, that, and it's worth saying at this stage that, that Jenny has now got, we've got somebody from Twitch coming in to do a session. We've got somebody from Adobe coming in to do a session. So she's, she's, she's done a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of the delivery of these sessions. She's done it herself this year, but she's now trying to get external people to come in as well. This is an example of the marketing materials that she produced in order to, to um, promote these, these sessions. And as we go through, you'll see um, that uh, that uh, she, was, she was addressing a wide range of different things using tools like Twine and AI tools and various different social networking and sort of social collaboration tools as she was going. Jenny was also using this as a platform for her own research and I don't know, she, she, she delivered a session at the, OER, the Alt OER conference earlier this year in, in, um, in Scotland, if any of you attended that. Now, at this point, I wonder whether we could just show that VVOX activity I did, because what I'm going to do now is move on to a showcase of some of the students' materials, and we'll look at some of the feedback we got from students. But I just wonder at the moment whether you could just respond to this very simple question about what are your priorities for student partnership. Um, as I say, what I want to do at the end is, is come back and think about what, what student leadership looks like, but I'd be interested to know what your perspective. And of course, when I ask you what are your priorities, we, you could interpret that question in a number of different ways, I suppose. What, what are the, well, how would you define student partnership or staff student partnership? How would, what, what do you hope to get from it? What do you think, stu how do you think students could most benefit? You could reply, you could answer any of those questions, or indeed you might think of other ways to respond. Okay, lovely. Of course, all you've had to do is scan that QR code, so I think we can probably return to the presentation now. Feel free just to contribute to that as I go, as I go through. Okay, so the culmination of this, so imagine what we've got. What have we got? What have I described so far? Let's just reprise for a moment. We've had a phase where Jenny and I were were discussing the guiding principles or the overarching framework for the scheme. What are, what are the key objectives? Um, that's interesting. Did, is that something I did? Um, so, um, oh no, that's fine. It's just my view. Um, we had so we discussed those overarching objectives. We then went through a recruitment phase, and the students who joined, or the, the TEL champions who joined, they were greeted and welcomed into a Canvas course which provided them with a large body of information, connected them to a range of open access sources, invited them to think about the relevance of those tools and the digital skills implied in the use of those skills within their own curriculum contexts, nursing, history, and so on. And then they embarked on this programme of events that ran through the year. There were 10 sessions, incidentally. You've just seen a few some of the materials that were used to promote a few of them. And then at the culmination of the process, it's not yet happened, we're just, we're just putting it together at the moment, there will be a showcase of those students' work. We've actually got, I think, 12 students coming forward to showcase their work. And, um, and, we, will, uh, and, and we will now look at some of the work that those students have produced. Um, we've got... One student asking a question, can virtual augmented reality um, aid learning in a new language? It's worth just noting at this point how the student has interpreted the, the, the role at this stage. You know, they've, they've almost created a, a, a project or they've posed a question for themselves to answer. In this one, we have um, a student who's used, decided to use it to create their own digital presence, I suppose you could call it, their own profile online. Um, we've, got, we've got a student here. This is an example of something they did early on in the process. Again, bear in mind, I'm not quite sure what Jenny was intending to say to these slides, but just giving you um, some of my, ref my reflections on this. You know, this student had decided to do a mind map, uh, trying to identify the ways in which they might engage with the scheme, how the scheme might, um, might benefit them. Um, and, and what's striking to me is actually is that quite a lot of the students brought with them, I think, 
quite a lot of assumptions about the kind of baggage about how a student should engage with opportunities like this one. Diane Budden, maybe not so much, but of the three examples we've seen so far, both of them seem to me the students have situated themselves in that kind of learner role. I've set myself a question that I'm going to answer, but I'm, but I'm approaching this in a, in a fairly kind of traditional learner role. Similarly here, this student is, is, is approaching the task in a quite an academic way. And um, here we've got an example of um, a student who, uh, who had very little um, digital literacy, who was by their own uh, admission um, quite daunted, quite fearful of technology, um, and she was working with Linktree, Linktree to make a, make a collection of linked um, social media, LinkedIn um, and um, Wix resources that would represent her development in this case as a historian, her historian, historian. Okay. Now, we got feedback from students, and I'm not going to read this out. I'm going to dwell on this slide for a little bit, so I'll just let you, let you re read that as your leisure as you speak. And it's not really represented here, and had I put this slide together, I think I'd have drawn on slightly different comments, but these are interesting. These, these serve to illustrate the way that the students perceived the scheme. But what in, what's interesting is a lot of the feedback that we received um, kind of reinforced that observation I was making a little bit earlier about students, the way students saw themselves and their role as a tell champion, and the and the way that they thought they should interact with the scheme. They talked repeatedly about their project. And bear in mind, remember, this idea of a project-led scheme was what we were trying to move away from. The, they talk about their engagement with the course. We never referred to the programme of events that Jenny hosted. We never referred to that as a course. And yet they, they spontaneously use that language, and I'm not talking about an individual student here, this was lots of students would refer to the TEL scheme as a course. And I say that because, sorry, did you give me a time warning? No, no, no right, great. Um, caught you out on the corner of my eye. <laughs> um, so, no, but one, one of the challenges I've got for Jenny next year, it's pertinent that we lead towards a consideration of what leadership looks like in this, sense, in this context, is that, is that what I'm going to ask Jenny to think about is how can we how can we start at a very early stage to start moving students away from this, from, from this perception that, you know, they're bringing in all the expectations and assumptions, as I think, as to how a student operates within a university, and they're imp importing those into this scheme. So the challenge for Jenny next year is to think about ways to kind of break students out of that mode of thinking that I think comes through from the feedback and from the projects that we've seen so far. Notwithstanding the fact that I think actually the projects are themselves quite startling. So Jenny's outlined some next steps there. I haven't actually, um, she might watch the recording of this, and in which case, um, there you go, Jenny, you heard it here first. Um, but here's some next steps that Jenny's defined. And again, I will, I will leave this on here because I think this is a good opportunity to address that issue about what kind of leadership we're talking about here. Because, of course, we're not talking about the leadership of a department. We're not talking about leadership of um, a line management, line manager, performance manager kind of thing. Jenny wasn't leading a team through a process of change in the way that, that, that Matt was describing. But what she was doing was she was leading a project. But fundamentally, I think she was also leading a group of students through this mentoring relationship that she'd established uh, and that she'd, she'd developed. Um, and I'm actually in the process at the moment of applying for additional funding for this scheme. And one of the reasons why we need this, and I don't think it came across from the feedback there again, because it's probably marginal to Jenny's concerns when she, she made this slide, but one of the things that came through this is that what the students valued more than anything else was the relationship with that senior tell champ, with, 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 with Jenny. Brilliant. And... Um, uh, and I've rather lost my flow there, but anyway, I'm sure it will get back on track. Um, so what Jenny is, um, so so what um, so what we're having to think about now is is how we're going to 
bring the scheme back last year, I've already identified one way in which I think it can work. We're going to have to think about how we can meet the, the requirements, the, 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 the things that the, the tell champions tell us they like most about the, 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 um, the scheme without a significant increase in resource, because between you and me, I'm not confident we're going to obtain one. Uh, but I always take the view that you should ask and be told no rather than just assuming the answer. Um, and we've, Jenny's also got to think about a way in which she can define the role of the tail champion because after this year, we will have to hand the baton over to somebody else. So, so how can we define what leadership looks like in that context in such a way that we can, we can recruit that, we can recruit another student into that role? Because as I say, I'm sure it's not about or all just about Jenny's agency. I think what this project shows is that if you give the students the opportunity, if you give them the freedom and you give them the support, and bear in mind that although I said earlier I stepped back and allowed Jenny to do this, there is a, another level of leadership that needs to happen alongside this. There is all the support that you need to provide on a logistical level, but also at a, at a personal level. Um, we need, to think, we need to think about that if this scheme is going to be sustainable. So, we've, so I think we've demonstrated how, what an impact a student can have in a leadership role. But now what the challenge, main challenge for us is how do we define that leadership role um, and how do I ensure that any future incumbent, any future role holder stepping into that position is going to be able to, to, um, to thrive and operate and have the same level of impact. And I'll, I'll stop there. So thank you. Thank you. So we, we do, uh, we do, I mean, bearing in mind that uh, you're presenting alone, but we do have some time for questions. I'm not sure if there are any questions on the VVOX system or if anybody's got any. Oh, you've got your poll. Did you want to reflect oh, yes, with great, yes. you're going to need this, so. Yeah, thank you. That's just... oh, no, it's, no on. it's on. Excellent. Lovely. So, right, okay, so we got an issue because the... The institution doesn't support or facilitate. Oh, they've disappeared. Oh, it's okay. Now, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because our institution talks an awful lot about student partnership, but I'm not sure that it does anything formal. It does actually have student mentoring schemes that are run by our student support and success advisors. It has little projects like ours that, that, that have schemes that do something similar, that put students in the role of mentors, which requires students to work alongside staff members in the development of the curriculum or extracurricular or co-curricular opportunities. There are schemes like that, but I'm, I, if you were to ask me, what does your institution do to support or facilitate uh, this kind of activity, I'd be hard pressed to tell you. So that's quite, that's quite interesting. I mean, I would say that they are in principle supportive of it, but I wouldn't like to tell you what tangible um, support they provide. Um, Keeping content current and relevant, enhanced feedback about learners' needs and interests. I mean, I think that's, I think, I think that's, that, that's, that's right. I mean, if you're going to commit to doing things that genuinely reflect learners' own priorities and interests, then you've got to be pretty nimble, haven't you? Because that is going to change. It's not just about the rate of progress and technological change. It's just almost every cohort of students, every individual student is, is, is different. So nimble and flexible. Um, challenge power imbalance between students and other stakeholders. I mean, that is, that is absolutely right. And I think one of the important th things that I learned, and I did so without any thought for my own workload, is that I just stepped smartly out of all the hard work. So um, Jenny didn't have to worry about a power imbalance because I'd fled off to the learning cafe or somewhere. So um, it's a serious question. It's a rather flippant response. But I think to a certain extent, you just have to create that separation I think if you say to the student, you're going to lead this project under my supervision, then it's going to fall over because that power balance is, is, asserts itself straight away. Um, better move on to questions. No, no, no. no, no, okay. I think, no we're, we're out of time. We're out of time completely. So, oh, you know, right. But in a way, that yeah. was like you questioning yourself. Well, yes. So yeah. I think that sort of, that sort of was the space of questions yeah. there. And what, I, and what I'll do is um, I'll look at the rest of those. Yeah, Maybe lovely. put together a blog myself. And yeah, yeah and, okay. and bung that up through the um, conference site. Well, no, thank you for that, and thank you for doing that under complex circumstances. <laughs> That's okay. thank you.